Today I have something new, but still very much on theme. The Anchor 140 watt power adapter, along with a few competitors like this, very much unknown to me, Rokserin, Rokorin, and the Koval. All of these adapters do something new. 140 watts on one port with the power delivery 3.1 specification. Before you comment, the Apple is on the way still. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on, and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, let's get these power adapters opened up and see what we get. The packaging is simple for these power adapters, cardboard boxes. They do all come wrapped in a bit of plastic though. The Koval is all power adapter. The box matches the size of the product, which is quite large. No extras in here. The power adapter is on the larger side of things. We get two USB ports, one C and one A. The C being capable of 140 watts on one port. This is a little limiting, but at least it has two ports. We can see the markings on this device. You get a safety listing as well as the Department of Energy 6 marking for efficiency. The user manual for this device is fairly simple. Basically, plug it in and use it. They do give you a little thank you card though. The Roserin experience is very similar to the Koval. I usually take the plastic wrap off before, but looks like this one comes with two pieces of single-use plastic. Yay. The power adapter in this case has three ports. I like this combination myself. Two USB-C and one USB-A. Only one port is 140 watt capable, of course. The power adapter has a UL safety listings as well as the DOE 6 mark. The user manual does something I really like. It gives the port distribution in visual form. So instead of trying to decipher a string of text, we get an easy to read picture. I like this. The anchor. These new boxes spell premium, right? I pre-de-sticker the outside of these boxes to make them easier to open. We get a plastic tray so we can find the donut. This is an attempt at making the power adapter stay in the wall socket better. They give a little instruction card for this as well. So one USB-C port, 140 watt capable, but one port. The adapter, as expected, has a safety listing and the DOE 6 mark, but one port. I mean, basically begging people to buy the 150 watt GAN Prime adapter instead. I know that adapter can't do 140 watts on one port though. They could totally do that and have the ultimate power adapter. I guess they need to save something for next year. The Anchor user manual makes some decent claims this time. Lower idle power, and we can check that, and decent overall efficiency. There is only one port, so no port sharing diagram required. Here are the weights for these adapters. Packaging for the Koval adapter weighed 34 grams. Power adapter weighs 301 grams. The Roserin packaging weighs 42 grams. The power adapter weighs 272 grams. The Anchor packaging weighs 109 grams. And the power adapter weighs 265 grams with the donut. The donut weighs 35 grams. Here is the Anchor in comparison with the Anchor 150 watt GAN Prime adapter. The form factor is almost identical. Size-wise, these adapters are all different, with the Koval being the largest, the Roserin taking the middle spot, and the Anchor being the most compact. It is time to plug in these power adapters and take a look at their idle performance. In general, these power adapters actually look good. To be at mere tenths of a watt idle power for an adapter that is ready to produce 140 watts is not bad. Then the Anchor comes along and makes all the other adapters look bad. This adapter uses almost no power at all in an idle state. This is impressive. Quality of the power in the state for all of these adapters is also on the higher side. The Koval and the Roserin both fall just outside the Department of Energy level six requirement though. They make the claim, so they may have gotten some golden sample to sneak into tolerance. On the edge, as many are though, and nothing on the anchor. You could plug in three of these anchor adapters and still be lower than these other two adapters for idle. These power adapters all have similar modes. The biggest challenge with all these adapters is the additional mode that they have that allows for 140 watts to be delivered on one port. I'll explain this more in a minute. The power adapters all have 5, 9, 15, and 20 volt power delivery 3.0 modes. These all also have a PPS or a variable output voltage mode, which helps the phone charge as efficiently as possible. These devices aren't all equal. The Roserin takes the cake here with a full 100 watts, 21 volts and 5 amps available in this mode. The Anchor takes the middle spot with an 11 volt, 5 amp mode, so 45 watts charging for Samsung. And the Koval is the lowest power in this mode with only 25 watts available. The Koval and Roserin also have a 12 volt output voltage mode, this is not available on the Anchor, and this is normal as 12 volts is optional. The devices with more than one port do require renegotiation of the power on any plug and unplug, and as soon as a second device is plugged in, the 140 watt mode goes away. Okay, the important part. Let's talk about 140 watts. A USB cable, see my video series on USB cables for more detail, has to be able to carry the current and has a real world resistance. Therefore, it has losses. 
The current can't really be pushed higher with the USB-C connector and the cables, so something has to give. Well, PoE has been around for a while and pushes the voltage up to 48 volts. Enter the USB Power Delivery 3.1 specification, which adds some new fixed voltage modes called Extended Power Range, or EPR. These allow for voltages of 28, 36, or 48 volts to push the power level up to 140, 180, or even 240 watts over existing connections with no additional loss in the wiring. It does require a special chip in the device, the charger, and the cable to make this work. Of course, I have all of these things to make 140 watts a reality in the lab. These devices all use 28 volt 5 amp mode to deliver 140 watts of output power on one port. The overload test on all these power adapters was highly variable. The anchor conked out at 144 watts, the lowest of the group, but fairly conservative. The Roserin took a reasonable 153 watts, and the Koval pushed things a little far with 166 watts before tripping on overload. The devices, except the anchor, stayed within the basic requirements of the USB power delivery specification for DC output voltage. In terms of the thermal performance, these adapters are some of the better ones I have seen. Compared with some adapters, the thermal stayed within very reasonable levels. As expected, all of these devices have power factor correction, this being the technique to consume the least AC current for the equivalent power level. This means less loss in other components like wiring and transformers. We can see some different implementation in these various devices though. The Koval and the Roserin always turn on power factor correction, whereas the anchor in the 5 volt mode does not. As we can see in the plots, the power factor correction of the Roserin and the Koval are not perfectly shaped. The Roserin has a bit of noise on it and the Koval has a funny shape. The anchor looks the best at full load, but it does have the one mode where it doesn't have power factor correction. The Roserin does okay on the idle power consumption, but it does use this power in a relatively low noise way or the idle current distortion is low. When we get into the active tests, this power adapter does quite well, from the very low power levels all the way to the full 140 watt power level. These are some of the best numbers I have seen from a power adapter when you look at the whole picture, and I've never heard of this brand before. Apparently these are manufactured by a company called Zines Power. The Koval adapter is very similar in that it has okay idle power consumption, a little high, but again, not too noisy, so acceptable. The power adapter in active tests, again, is great. Not quite as efficient as the Roserin design, but really not a bad choice. At this power level, power factor correction is essentially required for reasonable current consumption, so of course is present. The anchor stands alone for a high power adapter. The user manual made a claim of idle power and the power adapter met that requirement while also being low noise. This is the lowest idle wattage for a large power adapter from anyone. The power adapter struggles if you are only using five volts though. If this power adapter is used for charging a phone, it won't operate operate in that high performance mode, but as soon as you leave the 5 volt mode, this power adapter takes off, and now it's going to top the performance of all the other adapters. This really takes things to a new level at the very high end. Very high efficiency, power quality scores, and everything to go with it. Not bad. The comparison in this case is essentially with themselves, and none of these are really bad. We can see the power levels around these adapters are pretty strong performance as well. The anchor, as long as you are using a PD mode, not 5 volts, are really the best. Everything here has a power factor correction, and anything without that is far below these performance levels. The Roserin nearly takes the top of the chart though with its overall high performance. On the idle graph, the anchor adapters make everyone else look bad. They, in general, use a little less power than the competition for these newer style adapters. This is great if you are leaving the power adapter plugged in with no other devices attached. This means very little zombie power consumption. On the average power consumption graph, the alternating power quality of these devices take the high spots. These adapters all scored among the best adapters, the Roserin taking the top spot for this class for now. The Anchor would take this spot if the lower power performance, 5 volt mode, was a little better. The Roserin power adapter is pretty good. It has a safety listing, the price point is about $90, but this adapter seems to be regularly on sale for much lower than this, and it has three ports so if you need to charge several devices, this is great. Or if you need the fastest single port charging, it'll do that too. This adapter has 100 watts available in the PPS mode, so no limitations there. It does what a power adapter needs to do. The idle power puts it just out of reach of the DOE6 efficiency rating. The Koval 140 watt adapter also doesn't seem bad. A little higher idle consumption, but that also carries a safety listing. The adapter has PPS, but it can only go up to 25 watts. The price point is also about $90. This adapter also uses a little too much power on that idle to meet the Department of Energy requirements, and this is physically the largest adapter of the group. 
The Anker 717 is the smallest charger in the group and probably the best. It supports PPS modes all the way to 45 watts, which means it can do the super fast 45 watt charging for your Samsung devices, but can also crank all the way up to 140 watts for devices in the future. There are very few devices on the market now that support this though. The issue with using this device as a phone charger is as stated, no power factor correction in the five volt mode means low power is not great with this device. Safety listed of course, and also physically the lightest and smallest without the donut. The Anker still has a low voltage output compared with others, so this may create some compatibility issues. In conclusion, these power adapters are really pushing the power quality higher. The Anker, Koval, and Roserin all make solid attempts at being the best adapter. The Roserin may be the best overall for power quality, but the Anker takes the win for idle power consumption and at the maximum power level. These adapters stayed cool during testing and all carried US and Canada safety listings. The Anker voltage levels may create some incompatibility, but this is common across their entire lineup, so they must have done some testing with this. Time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database. And for the 140 watt class of adapters, I mean, search for 140 watts on pqs.app page and find out that more have already been tested. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to put this 140 watt PD 3.1 power bank through its bases. See how fast it will charge and how efficient it is at converting power. There's a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos, so check it out. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future.